Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where you are rewarded for knowing obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hi, I'm Terry. This is my son, Steve, and we're from Hertfordshire. Couple number two. Hi, I'm David. This is Rachel, and we're from Farnham and Aldershot. Couple number three. Hello, I'm Julia. This is my brother-in-law, Andy, and we're from Teesside. And couple number four. Steady, Andy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shawnee. This is my housemate, Amy, and we're students in Cheltenham. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show as it goes along. There's only one person left for me to introduce. He's our action hero, fighting the world's bad guys, armed only with an easy quip and an obscure fact about the Central African Republic. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everyone. Hiya. Good afternoon to you. And to you. Oh, we had a cracking show last time, didn't we? It really was a good show. We've got two of those pairs returning today as well. They were both very good. Terry and Steve, very unlucky in that head-to-head. -head. And uh, I think Andy and Julia as well. We had a brilliant round two where everyone was within three points of each other. Yeah. And they got knocked out. They're very unlucky as well. So it's going to be a very, very hard show to win, I think, this one, for our new pairs. Should be an absolute belter. Thank you very much indeed. Now, all our questions on point have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants obviously need to find the obscure answers our 100 people didn't get. Now, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer, of course, you all knew that. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, Liz and Becca didn't win the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £2,000. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, in this round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there is to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will, of course, be eliminated. Uh, our first category today is... Musicians. Musicians. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Mm -hmm. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question concerns... Famous bass players. Famous bass players, Richard. On each pass, we're going to show you the names of seven bass players. We need you to tell us the band with which they had the greatest chart success, please. So seven on each pass. It's going to be 14 bands and all to guess at home. Very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. So we are looking for the name of the band that these bass players were most famously associated with. And our first board reads like this. We've got Sting, John Deacon, Guy Berryman, Gene Simmons, Dougie Pointer, Adam Clayton and Mike Durnt. I'll read those one last time. Sting, John Deacon, Guy Berryman, Gene Simmons, Dougie Pointer, Adam Clayton and Mike Durnt. Terry and Steve, you drew lots before the show today. You're going to go first. Terry, welcome back to the show. You were head-to-headers last time. Yes, we were. Yes, yeah, we was, uh, we was unlucky, I feel. I think you probably were. I mean, it, it often comes down to that in the head-to-head. -head. It's who goes first. Quite often, there is one very obvious low-scoring answer. Mm. Now, bass players, Terry. Does your heart sing when you look at that board? Sink? <laughs> um, I think I know a couple. I'm going to go for the one I'm least sure of. But uh, I'm going to go for Gene Simmons. I think he was the bass player in Kiss. Kiss, says Terry, for Gene Simmons. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew Gene Simmons was in Kiss. Absolutely right. There we are, 28. Well done, Terry. <laughs> Not a bad answer by any means. Well played, Terry. Gene Simmons, yeah, he claims to have slept with 4,800 women. <laughs> there we go. Rachel. <laughs> Welcome to Pointless, Rachel. Lovely to have you here. Um, and you are from Surrey, from Farnham, is that right? From Aldershot. From Aldershot. Yeah. Um, and what do you do in all the shots, Rachel? Um, IT manager um, uh, or project manager, that kind of thing. Very good. And how do you and David know each other? We met on a train 14 years ago when I used to travel up to London. And oh, uh, David nice. worked in London. There was a whole group of us and uh, we kind of formed train club and David and I have stayed friends ever since. That's nice. I mean, do the rest of you all keep up as well? Some of them, but they've all kind Some of dispersed. Some have branched off. <laughs> OK. Uh, Rachel, now then, bass players in bands. Yeah, that's not very good. Unfortunately, I know Sting was in police. <laughs> the police. OK, the police, yeah. says Rachel for Sting. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said the police for Sting. 
Well, it's right. Still going down. 28. Ooh. 28's our only score so far. 53 is what you score for Sting in the Police. Of course, had even more success as a solo artist, but, yeah, it was the, the basis in the police. <laughs> Now then, Julia, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, remind us what happened with you last time. Um, we went out in the second round. Um, we both got correct answers. Cover versions. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. And we both got correct answers. Mine was a pure guess, so I was quite lucky. But yeah, we there was four points in it, I think, between. So. Yes, it wasn't. It, was, wasn't it was too embarrassing. It wasn't embarrassing <laughs> by any means. No, it's just a very low-scoring round, and you happen to be the high scorers. Yeah. Now then, today's very different. Very, very different. It's not, it's not, it's not cover versions, it's bass players. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, do you, how do you feel about that, that board? Well, I know three, and Rachel and Terry have said two. So, um, I'm going to say... I'm by no means ashamed to say that I've seen this band five times, maybe six. So, uh, Dougie Pointer, McFly. <laughs> Doggy Pointer, <laughs> McFly. So yeah. it's Julia. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. McFly. <laughs> 13. <laughs> 13. Brilliant score. Very well done, Julia. So you and I, Julia, share a love of McFly, I have oh, to God. say. Oh, good, good. We're always gone about yeah, McFly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm a big fan of McFly. Harry does been on, stood, stood exactly where you were. <gasps> Pointless celebrities. Brilliant. Yeah, I know, right? If you've, yeah. got, if you've got a spare 15 minutes, to check out Tom from McFly's uh, wedding, oh, the speech wedding speech as well, lovely, which is yeah. lovely. Have you seen it? Yeah. Isn't it? It's made great, isn't cry. it? Made me cry. Made me cry a bit. <laughs> it's, been, it's been viewed <laughs> by about. It did. It did. It's been viewed by about 16 million people. That that. Yeah, wedding it's quite video. something. It's, it's, yeah. it's ever so good. It's great. Very good. Okay, now then, Amy. Welcome to the show. You've come from Cheltenham. Cheltenham, yes. Where you are a student. What are you studying? Um, there? study events management. So how, that's just basically you're studying parties <laughs> basically, for, th yeah, basically. for three years. For four years. Four years. What yeah. year are you in now? Fourth year. So we're on to canapes now. That's good. <laughs> Fourth year. <laughs> canapes and cocktails. How's that going? Um, yeah, it's going well. Yeah, getting on okay. Um, anyway, Amy, what are you going to go for? This is your board. You can uh, you can feel free to fill in all the blanks if you like. Um, I'd love to, but the only three I knew were the three that have been guessed. So I'm going to take a guess. I don't even know if this band has a bass player, um, but the name Adam Clayton, it just rings a bell. The Fray. The Fray? Mm. Adam Clayton. The Fray. OK, well, let's find out if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said The Fray for Adam Clayton. Oh, bad luck, Amy. Bad luck. Always hard when you're on that last podium, because, uh, yes, there aren't always going to be ones that you know at the end of the board. But uh, I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer, and I'm afraid it scores you the maximum of 100 points. Sorry. Sorry, Amy. Uh, the four we've got remaining there, probably four of the biggest bands in the world, I would say. <laughs> the, but you're not, you know, the bass players are not always the most well-known people in those groups. Do you know any of those, Zander? I know, think I do, yeah. Uh, do you know John Deacon? Is Queen. Is the bassist of Queen. Yep. 12 points. Do you know Guy Berryman? But I think Keen. Is it? No. Coldplay. That's Coldplay. Coldplay. Would have scored you four points. Uh, Adam Clayton is the basis of U2. That would have scored you 18 points. Um. And Mike Durnt is the bassist with Green Day. He would have scored you three points, though. Mike Durnt <laughs> is the best answer on that board. Thanks very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 13, Julia. Best score of that pass. Well done. Andy and Julia can feel quite pleased with themselves after that. Uh, 28, Terry and Steve. Up to 53, uh, where we find Rachel and David. And then up to 100, I'm afraid, where Amy and Shawnee are to be found. Um, but who knows? Uh, Terry and Steve may have the same problem at the other end of the line. So, uh, Shawnee, a nice low score from you might be enough to keep you in the game. Um, right, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more bass players on the board, and here they come. We have got Geddy Lee, Paul McCartney, John Paul Jones, Roger Waters, John Entwistle, Christopher Wilsonholm and Flea. For the second time, Geddy Lee, Paul McCartney, John Paul Jones, Roger Waters, John Entwistle, Christopher Wilsonholm and Flea. Now, remember, we are looking for the names of the bands that these bass players most famously played for. And obviously, Chonny, you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Uh, Chonny, great to have you here. I think Chonny. Is it should be Shonny? Shonny. Yeah. Shonny. And how, how does that come about? Um, 
It's short. <laughs> short for my name, Chantal. Ah, good. I just don't particularly like that name, so... <laughs> so, Shawnee, it is? Yes. Right. Um, and you are also doing... I study events management as well, yeah. It's not all parties, by the way. There's lots I of know, health I and know. safety and boring stuff No, I well. know. I know. <laughs> no, it's a, an awful lot of paperwork as there well. There is. Yeah. OK, Shani, what are you going to go for from this board? I know two of them, um, but I'm going to have to go for flea and red hot chilli peppers. Flea, red hot chilli peppers. Now, there's no red line for you. You're the high scorers. You just have to hope red hot chilli peppers is going to take it a long way down that column. Let's find out. Flea, red hot chilli peppers, is that right? It is right. Still going down. Well done, 12. <laughs> Not bad at all, Shawnee. Good answer, Shawnee. Give yourself a chance there. His real name is Michael Balsari, and he was a jazz trumpet prodigy before he became a, uh, a bassist. A bassist. Mm. That's, that's a, quite a modest trade down, isn't it? Really? What, you think that uh, being a bassist is not impressive? Now, listen, I know that you are... I know that you will speak up for famous bass players in bands, but a jazz jump at Prodigy, you right up up front. Yeah. There you are. And being a bassist the... is... Well, quite often it's just slightly more... You know, the bass line, oh, you'd miss it if it weren't there, but you, you don't always hear it. Oh, little jazz trumpet prodigy player out there. <laughs> You're not going to miss that. But just do. <laughs> Even brilliant bass players. <laughs> Even brilliant ones. See, my brother is a bass player. Zander knows that. And I know. Been <laughs> but even brilliant bass players. Deliberately mean. It's, I, no, I'm just saying Whoa, it's a fact. You just fact said you wouldn't of, even notice. It's a sonic fact. <laughs> it's a so, the, just You're the bass a sonic thing. fact. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I am. <laughs> I, I will admit that freely. But I. You know what I'm saying? A trumpet, a big trumpet up front, out there, no, no, bass no. players, no, they're more bass modest. Players. They're more modest. By modest, you mean less talented? No, by no means. More talented? By no means. You mean more talented? Possibly, yes. In some cases, yes. Certainly in the case of your brother, Matt, I know. More talented than any jazz trumpet <laughs> prodigy I've come across. Yeah, he sure is. He's like Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> Where were we? Uh, Andy, welcome back. So, yes, round two last time. Surely you've got to have your eye on the, on the, the giddy heights of the head-to-head -head and beyond. Oh, I got a boy can but dream. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> listen, I think there's going to play... Somehow, just, I just think you're going to know about these people. Have you got a good answer from that, that board? Uh, there's a few that I, I think I know. Um, I'll, I'll go for John Paul Jones and Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, says Andy. Now, the high scorers at the moment are Shawnee and Amy on 112. You're on 13, so 98 or less sees you into the next round. Led Zeppelin for John Paul Jones. Is it right? How many people said it? There's your red line. That does it. It's a great answer. Nine. Very, very well done indeed. Takes your total up to 22. That is going to be the best score of the round. Good answer, Andy. And John Paul Jones was a church organist when he was young. I suppose that's better than playing the bass as well, isn't it? Well, that's a bit of a trade down. What? <laughs> From playing the first line of a hymn to standing. Do, 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 do. Uh, so much harder than that. I'm just going to shut up. Um, David, welcome. Welcome to the show. Are you still on that train? No, thank goodness. Not riding that train either. <laughs> no, no, no. So what happened? Did you, did you on Fridays were people did people bring things and share things out on the train? We we did a little bit. It was the it was the old style trains, you know, with the slam doors. So it was easier just for the eight of us to to travel together. Right. And, uh, yeah, we used to sort of um, occasionally do business, all sorts of things. We've <laughs> I've, I've, we've done weddings, funerals. Wow. Everything. What happened? So if somebody else sort of came into the carriage, oh. would you all just? <laughs> <laughs> they were usurpers. All oh, right. <laughs> we were not happy. They, they got the evil eye. They never did it twice. No, I'm Would up. you say you were a popular group? <laughs> <laughs> Amongst ourselves, yes. <laughs> well, talking so. of popular groups, we have uh, five more still to get on that board, David. Yes. Well, I think I know three, but I'm going to go for Roger Waters and Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, says David, for Roger Waters. You're on 53. Again, the high score is Shawnee and Amy there on 112. So 58 or less sees you through to the next round. There's your red line. Let's see. Is Pink Floyd going to get David below that red line? Let's find out. 
Yes, it is. Still going down. Look at that. 22. <laughs> 75, your total. Yeah, unbelievably, the third highest paid music star in 2013, Roger Waters, and £14 million. Just from live yeah, performances? just from live performances, beaten only by Madonna and Bruce Springsteen. Steve. Steve, welcome back. Now then, you did very well last time, through to the head-to-head. -head. Surely you've got to hope to do that again. Yeah, but I'm struggling. Are you? Well, this is great news for Shawnee and Amy over there on 112, because their only ticket, not out of here, but <laughs> to remain in here, ticket, the sort of ticket that David and Rachel would understand, to stay in the carriage, marked pointless, is uh, <laughs> for you to score 100. Yeah. Talk well, us through your answers. Well, I was hoping a music round came up, and then, obviously... It, it went and did. It went and did, <laughs> and then that happened. Well... Uh, I think we've got to say, Paul, I know that Paul McCartney is the Beatles, and then we have, I think we might have to have a stab at the other three, really. I've, I've really no idea who Geddy, where Geddy Lee or Christopher Wollstone play, so do I need, I'd, I really, I need to have a guess, I think. What about John Entwistle? I think I'm going to have a guess at that and say he was in The Who. Is that a complete guess? Yeah, yes. OK, well, the high scorers, as I say, are Chonny and Amy on 112. There is your red line. That's what you have to get below to stay in the game. John Entwistle, The Who. Is it right? Very good guessing there, Steve. Very well done indeed. You are through to the second round and you've scored 25, total 53. Now, he played the French horn in the Middlesex Youth Orchestra, so <laughs> there you go. But, yeah, he's in the Who. You must have known it somewhere in the back of your head. Do you know what? Funnily enough, if you'd said Paul McCartney and the Beatles, you still would have got through, because it only scores 80 points. <laughs> 80 points for Paul McCartney and the Beatles. Again, I wonder if people thought it was a trick question and didn't know he was a bass player. Maybe, you know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Something's up Strange. there. Strange. Uh, Geddy Lee is from Rush. Canadian band would have scored six. And the best answer on that board... Uh, probably the, uh, the most recent of the groups up there, Christopher Wilson Home, is the bassist in Muse. Would have scored you one point, so very well done if you said that at home. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so at the end of our first round, the losing pair with their score of 112. I'm afraid it's Shawnee and Amy. I'm so sorry. That was a tough round, if you didn't know. Uh, Flea was a great answer. When, um, it, came, when it came up, it was, I thought that's the only bass player I know, so I was quite lucky it came up, really. Oh, well. Nice. Good news is we get to see you again next time, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, Shawnee and Amy, thanks so much for playing. Thank Lovely contestants, thank you. <laughs> but for the three remaining pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> so, only three pairs remain now. Um, David and Rachel, our only new pair to make it through to round two. Very well done indeed. Slightly out ahead, though, in terms of the score, our trained friends. Um, Andy and Julia, lovely low scoring from you. Terry and Steve, very respectable from you as well. Uh, so, our category for round two is American drama. American drama. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, the question concerns... Actors who have appeared in American TV dramas. Actors from American TV dramas, Richard. In a moment, Zander's going to show you the names of four long-running American TV dramas. We're looking for the name of any actor or actress who've appeared in 100 episodes, at least, of one of these shows, please. So any actor or actress who's appeared in 100 shows, at least, of one of the American TV dramas you're about to see. Very, very best of luck. OK, so, as Richard's just mentioned, we're going to put four American TV dramas on the board. They'll remain on the board the whole way through the round, up and back down again. You just have to name any bit-part actor who's been in it for a mere hundred episodes of that drama. Um, OK, and here are those four dramas. They are Dawson's Creek, Desperate Housewives, ER or The West Wing. There we are. We need the name of any actor or actress who's appeared in 100 episodes of any of those dramas. Steve. OK. Um, don't watch any of them. So struggling again. Um, so I'm going to 
It's going to be quite high, I think, but uh, Terry Hatcher was in Desperate Housewives. Terry Hatcher, says Steve. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Terry Hatcher. It's right. It's not bad, Steve. 25. <laughs> Respectable score there for Terry Hatcher. Yeah, that's the key to point this, Steve. If it's a category you're no good at, at least know something. It's very, very handy. And 25 points is a very good score. 181 episodes of Desperate Housewives for Terry Hatcher. Wow. David. I haven't really seen any apart from Desperate Housewives, so I'm going to have to guess Eva Longoria. Eva Longoria, says David. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Eva Longoria. He's right. Well, 25, our only score so far. Let's see how far Eva Longoria goes down. 31. Also, 181 episodes. She was the highest paid TV actress in 2011 and $13 million. Wow, she wants to play bass in a band. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she wants to up her income. Uh, now then, Julia. Yeah. Julia, is this good for you? Um, I've only ever watched um, Desperate Housewives and I only ever watched the first series which I thought was enough for anyone. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with Desperate Housewives as well and say um, Marcia Cross. Marcia Cross. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Marcia Cross. Again, it's right. Now, 25, our lowest score so far. Oh, you leave them in your wake. Look at that, 11. Very well done indeed, Julia. <laughs> Marcia Cross. Yeah, she played Brie for, again, 181 episodes. We could have all just got together at the start of this and done a Desperate Housewives round. <laughs> would have saved an awful lot of research. <laughs> Thanks very much. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Julia and Andy, once again, the low scorers at this point. Uh, on 11, very well done indeed. Then up to 25, where we find Steve and Terry. And then 31, David and Rachel. Now then, Rachel. That's not going to change that board, so I hope you've got a really good answer up your sleeve, and let's hope that's enough to keep you in the game. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, then, Andy, we are looking for any actor or actress who's received a credit for 100 episodes or more of any of these shows, US TV dramas. What do you think, Andy? Whether I should admit to this or not, um... <laughs> I've seen a bit of Dawson's Creek in my time, so <laughs> I could go for a few from that. I've not, I don't know any Desperate Housewives, nor are uh, not really the West Wing, so gives you a little idea of what I'm, I'm like. I'm going to go for <laughs> James Van Der Beek for Dawson's Creek. James Van Der Beek says, Andy, the high scorers are Rachel and David on 31. You're on 11, so a score of 19 or less sees you comfortably into the head-to-head. -head. James Van Der Beek. There is your red line. Let's see if James Van Der Beek will get you below it. He's right. It's looking good. Yep, you've done it. 14. Very well done indeed. 14 takes your total to 25. We said they'd be a strong pair today, didn't we? Mm. And uh, they're certainly doing that. Yeah, he plays Dawson himself, James Van Der Beek. 128 episodes. Now then, Rachel. You're the high scorers. We need <laughs> yeah. a little bit of magic here, Rachel. A little bit of... I'm not well, sure you've got that much magic. Carriage club magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also don't watch very much of those, but I'm going to go with Noah Wiley. Noah Wiley? Yeah. Noah Wiley. No red line for you as you're the high scorers. But let's see, Noah Wiley. Is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Ooh, very well done. Nine. The best score of the round so far, Rachel. Very well done. That takes your total up to 40. Is that going to be enough to keep you in the game? Let's hope so, Richard. Dr John Carter, the, uh, the longest-serving character of all on ER, 254 episodes. Now then, Terry. <laughs> Terry, we have a game on our hands here. You have to score 14 or less. No, we or don't it's have a goodbye. Game <laughs> oh, Terry. Uh, no, Terry. There you are. Well, I've never watched any of these. I've no idea who these people are. I tell you what, you've got several years of, of watching there ahead of you. Oh, you, should, you really should watch some of those. OK. I can heartily recommend The West Wing. Well, I'll make a point of it in future, but it's going to be too late, so I'm going to have to do the... Uh, have to do the 
pointless thing of making up a name. Which is, I'll be honest, my favourite moment yeah. in point. <laughs> we do like this, don't we? Oh, I love this. You know, it's, it's, and it's worked before. It has yeah. worked. It's worked a couple of times. I think Brown has been lucky in, uh, in, in, in Pointless. <laughs> Certainly has. Last yeah. time this happened, yeah. Uh, yes. Brown. Last two times it's happened. Happened with Nick Brown and Jimmy Brown as well. Oh, yes, so it did. Right. Mm. That, 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 that stacks the odds against no, me, I yeah, feel. I'm digging Brown's had its run, <laughs> but there we are. I'm not... um, and uh, let's go with Christine, eh? Christine Brown. I mean, I, I love her personally, but I don't know if she's in any of these. Christine Brown. Mm. Christine Brown. OK, Christine Brown, says Terry. Here's your red line. It's quite low. Ooh, I wonder if Christine Brown's going to get you below that red line. If it does, if she does, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Is it right? Oh, no, I'm afraid. An incorrect answer, Terry. I'm sorry. That takes your total up to 125, having scored you 100 points. Yeah, there's no colours at all uh, here, Terry. I just took a very quick look down the list, just in case you missed anyone. Uh, a Sheen is sort of a colour. If you said Martin Sheen, you would have scored nine points. That would have seen you through to the next round from the West Wing. But let's take a look at some of the pointless answers up here. Terry Hatcher's daughter, Andrea Bowen, uh, from Desperate Housewives. Brenda Strong plays Mary Alice Young. Uh, Janelle Maloney is from uh, the West Wing, plays Donna Moss. Mary Beth Peel from uh, Dawson's Creek. Moratini and Mackay Pfeiffer, both from ER. Uh, Ming Na Wen, also from ER. Then these last two are both from the West Wing. Nicole Robinson and Richard Schiff, who plays Toby Ziegler in the West Wing. He was a pointless answer. Uh, let's take a look at the highest scorers, the ones that most of our 100 people said. Alongside Terry Hatcher on 25, you'd have found Katie Holmes, who, of course, was in uh, Dawson's Creek. She would have scored you 25. Eva Longoria, we've already heard, 31. And top of that list, famously starred in ER before he became one of the most famous movie stars in the world, George Clooney, 41 points. Very good. Thanks, Richard. Uh, so, at the end of our second round, I'm afraid it's Terry and Steve who have to leave us. Head to head as last time you were on the show, and I had very high hopes for you this time round. You really should, you should watch some of these. Proud to say I don't. <laughs> what? OK, well, fair enough. Well, uh, we, we will have to say goodbye to you now. Um, great shame. It's been great having you on both shows. Thanks so much for playing Terry and Steve. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head to head. Congratulations, Andy and Julia, David and Rachel. You're now only one round away from the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,000. <laughs> so we need to decide which pair it's going to be going through to the final and playing for that money. And to do that, you're now going to go head to head. This time you're allowed to confer and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. David and Rachel, <laughs> you're newcomers to the game and here you are in the head to head round. Your very first pointless. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah. I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very, very well done. Andy and Julia, second round. We said goodbye to you last time. This time, though, an immaculate performance. Very, very low score. Your total scores are less than half of David and Rachel's. Very, very <laughs> strong performance. So, well, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head to head. <laughs> okay, here's your first question, and it concerns. Subway systems. Subway systems, Richard. We're going to show you five images now of subway systems from around the world. We need you to tell us in which city would you find those subway systems, please. Best of luck. Wow. Um, OK, let's reveal our five subway systems, and here they come. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Five subway systems. That's such a relief. I thought it was just going to be maps. <laughs> um, anyway, there we are. Uh, much easier, I hope. Andy and Julia, you go first, as you've played best throughout the show so far. Um, well, <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, we think we might know a couple, but... Yeah. They're very much guesses. Um, but are we happy? Yeah, I'll yep, go with you. Happy. Yep. I'm going to have a stab in the dark with C in New York. C, New York. C, New York, say Andy and Julia. David and Rachel, talk us through... Oh, I mean, trains! <laughs> talk us through the board. Go for it. I, I think I know one, because I think I remember the colours of it when I travelled on it. 
I think I'm going to say D, Paris. D, Paris. Now, what was it that made you think Paris? The colours on the doors. The colours on the doors. OK. Now then, so we have New York City from Andy and Julia. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said New York. It's right. Fifteen. Very well done. Fifteen for New York. David and Rachel are going to say Paris for D. Paris. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Paris. It is right. Is it going to beat 15, though? It's getting close. Oh, it does. Look at that. Seven. Very well done, indeed. Very well done, David and Rachel. After one question, you're up 1-0. Two good answers there. I think maybe New York more recognisable because it's in so many films and what have you, isn't it? Um, now, A is London. But would only have scored you 61 points. So it wouldn't have been the worst answer in the world. Let's leave B for a moment and go to E. Now, E is very, very beautiful underground, and it's in Moscow. And that would have scored you 13 points. But there's a pointless answer up here. It's B. Sander, you know this one. I have no idea what that was. No, come on, is. just look, just well, look at the obvious clues in there. I have absolutely no idea. Oh, goodness me. As everyone at home will tell you, it's Pyongyang in North Korea. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Pyongyang. <laughs> Wow. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Uh, so here comes your second question. Andy and Julia, you have to win this one to stay in the game. And you go second this time. It concerns... Presidents of the United States. Presidents of the United States, Richard. I'm going to show you a list of clues now uh, to facts about the office of President of the USA. Can you give us the most obscure answer? OK, let's reveal our five clues, and here they are. We have got... City that was home to the presidency immediately before Washington, D.C. The month in which the presidential elections are usually held. The political party that's produced the most presidents since 1900. Name of the president's official country residence in Maryland. And the name of the Oval Office desk which was donated by Queen Victoria. I'll read those all one last time. The city that was home to the presidency immediately before Washington, D.C., the month in which presidential elections are usually held, the political party that has produced the most presidents since 1900, name of the president's official country residence in Maryland, and the name of the Oval Office desk which was donated by Queen Victoria. Five clues to facts about the president of the United States. This time, David and Rachel, you go first. Well... <laughs> We're not entirely certain, but um, we think we'll go for the president's official country residence in Maryland as Camp David. Camp David. You're going to go for Camp David. OK, now, Andy and Julia. Mm. Talk us through the board. Yeah, good luck. Um, <laughs> not, not the best one for us, really. Um, it's a definite stab in the dark for, for all of them, but what do you want to do? I... Yeah, why not? I think, um, I think October. So you want to go for October? Yeah. Let's go for it, then. So the month in which presidential elections are usually held is October. Yeah. You're going to say October. October. So we have Camp David and we have October. Now then, David and Rachel, you said Camp David was the name of the official country residence. Let's find out if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. If it is... It's right. 29. 29. Now then, Andy and Julia, you have said October is the month in which presidential elections are usually held. October. Let's find out if that's right. And if it is, how many people said it? No, oh, bad luck. Bad luck, Andy and Julia. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means, David and Rachel, you go through to the final after two questions. 2-0. Two <laughs> Very well played. Not a million miles away from October. It's November, I'm afraid. It was held on the Tuesday after the first Monday in November, is, uh, is presidential election date. Um, and that would have scored you 56 points, so it's a big scorer. Now, the city that was home to the presidency before Washington, D.C. was Philadelphia. Would have scored you four points. Uh, you would have won the point if you guessed the next one, the political party that's produced the most presidents. It's only two choices. What do you think you would have gone for? Republicans. Republicans. That was our other option. 
would have just won you the point, Republicans. <laughs> 26 points it would have got you. And the name of the Oval Office desk is the Resolute Desk. Resolute Desk. And if you put an umlaut above the U, you can also get that in Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Andy and Julia. How extraordinary, against the grain there. You've been such brilliant players throughout the entire show. Wonderful low scorers in every round. And then a 2-0 defeat, I'm afraid, in, uh, in this. David and Rachel just got the better of you there. Um, but it's been great having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Andy and Julia. Thank you. But for David and Rachel, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, David and Rachel. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy, so very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,000. So, to win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. First, you have to choose a category, and you can choose from these five options. They are... Australian actors, football, authors, royal families, space travel. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's certainly not going to be football or authors. No. Australian actors? Oh, go on then. <laughs> Australian actors. Australian please. actors it is. Okay. <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Heath Ledger films as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the name of any feature film made for cinema release for which Heath Ledger received an acting credit, please. There's always no short films, TV films, documentaries, anything like that, but voice performances do count, so any Heath Ledger films, very, very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £2,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Ten things I hate about you. Broke back mountain. Yeah, that's Batman. Batman. Was he in the man with the iron mask? No. Can't think. Was he in any of those strange Russell Crowe films that you've watched? No, not that I know of. Uh, 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 I can't think of anything other than Broke back mountain. Really. And I've got ten things I hate about you. Well, we'll go with those. We need a third one. Batman, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, Batman. was it no, The Dark Knight Rises, was it? Or the other one, the one before that? The one with the Joker that. in it. Yeah, but which one was that? Was that Batman, Richard Perns, or is it The Dark Knight Rises? Which is the last one? Wasn't the last one. Uh... Oh, well, never mind. We'll just go with Dark Knight Rises, what the heck? No, he did something in jousting as well. He was a jouster in some film. Oh, what was God, that was a dreadful movie, wasn't it? Was uh... it not Camelot or um, what's a jousting cut? <laughs> OK, your time is up. Right. We were looking for Heath Ledger films. I now need your three answers. Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Um, Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain. And Ten Things I Hate About You. And Ten Things I Hate About You. <laughs> now, of those three, which is your best crack at a pointless answer? Ten Things answer? I Hate About You. Ten Things I Hate About You. And which is your least likely to be pointless? Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got The Dark Knight Rises, Brokeback Mountain and Ten Things I Hate About You. So we were looking for Heath Ledger films. Your first answer, The Dark Knight Rises, you thought was probably the least likely to be pointless. Only one of these answers has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So let's find out. For £2,000, how many people said The Dark Knight Rises? Is it right? No, bad luck. Well, we expect. Bad luck. <laughs> OK, so not a pointless answer, yeah. therefore. Only two more shots at today's yeah. jackpot, £2,000. David, what would you do with £2,000? I've got a couple of friends who've got a little son who's just started to play cello and he's really good and he's got the school cello at the moment. I will buy him a cello. Yeah, oh, that's the nicest thing anyone's <laughs> ever said! <laughs> what, about, what about a holiday somewhere, like people usually say? Um, no, a friend. A friend's a friend. son needs a cello. He needs a cello, yeah. Very good. Rachel. Um, I'd like some solar panels on my roof. <laughs> <laughs> wow. OK, good. Very good. Becoming sustainable and providing music. This is, this is very good. Have, okay, you thought, for... have you thought, instead of buying him a cello, maybe buying him a bass? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, there's, there's gold in... money in it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Solar-powered base. <laughs> yeah. OK, now, we're looking for Heath Ledger films. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, Brokeback Mountain. This has to be pointless, obviously, if you're going to win that jackpot of £2,000. But let's just see. Maybe it is pointless. Maybe everyone forgot about Brokeback Mountain. OK, well, your first answer, The Dark Knight Rises, was wrong. But this answer, absolutely on the money. Brokeback Mountain now going down to 41. OK, 41. <laughs> Only one more chance to win today's jackpot. But I think this, this is a contender, I'd say, this answer. Ten things I hate about you. I don't even remember it. Well, that, <laughs> well there you are. David doesn't remember it. Why should our 100 people remember it? And there's a cello and a solar panel or two riding on it. So we are looking for Heath Ledger films, your third and final answer. Ten things I hate about you. You thought this was your best shot at a pointless yes. answer. Now, to win that jackpot of £2,000, obviously it has to be pointless. Let's find out ten things I hate about you. How many people said it? Well, it's right. Dark Knight Rises was incorrect. Brokeback Mountain took us down to 41. Ten things I hate about you is now taking us down through the teens into single figures. Seven! <laughs> That's a good answer. That was a very good answer. Unfortunately, though, not a pointless answer, I'm afraid, which means you don't win today's jackpot of £2,000, and that rolls over onto the next show. But we have really loved having you on the show. <laughs> it's been brilliant to have you here. Thank you so much. And you do, of course, get to take home the pointless trophy, so very well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Unlucky guys. Uh, of course, he wasn't in The Dark Knight Rises, but he was in The Dark Knight. That's what he won his, uh, yeah. his posthumous Best Supporting Actor Oscar for. The jousting film you were thinking about was A Knight's Tale. Oh. I would have scored you 17 points, though, oh, so okay. uh, it wouldn't have been a pointless answer. But let's take a look at some of the pointless answers, though. His first big role internationally was Black Rock. Uh, the cult skate movie Lords of Dogtown was a pointless answer. Halle Berry won a Best Actress Oscar for Monsters Ball, and Heath Ledger was in that. Would have been a pointless answer. Pause, which featured uh, Billy Connolly as the voice of a Jack Russell. <laughs> the Imaginarium of Dr Parnassus was a pointless answer. The Terry Gilliam film, The Sin Eater, also a pointless answer. And there's one more, I think. Yeah, two hands. So very well done if you said any of those at home. And tough luck, guys. Play it ever so well throughout. <laughs> did you? Did you know any of those? No, I did. I knew two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, David and Rachel, but we've loved having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. David and Rachel. Thank you. So, sadly, David and Rachel didn't win our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.